Hey, my good people. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2011 Porsche 911 Carrera S. Today we're going to be upgrading the car behind us with a Bilstein coilover kit. However, the process will be the same if you're sticking to your stock suspension. Uh, today, the coilover kit that we're working on is for vehicles that have pass them, Porsche Active Suspension Management. And basically, the cabin has a button that you can hit and it controls the ride quality of the vehicle. So these are cool because you retain that feature. You don't have to worry about a delete or putting in a resistor or anything like that. Today, we're going to be focusing strictly on the passenger side of the vehicle as we already did the driver's side off camera. However, the process is going to be completely identical. These coilovers are going to give you a range of 30 to 55 millimeters for lowering. So today we're going to go with what they came set up with right out of the box. However, you have a whole range of adjustability there, which is pretty great. One thing that's not included with this kit is any mounts. So just keep that in mind. Unless you plan on reusing your old hardware, you might want to get some new strut mounts and shock mounts. A couple of things to note about the Bilstein kit is it comes with obviously your front and rear struts. It comes with the extenders for the PASM cables couple zip ties and that's about it. So today we're using our Lem Porter kit which you can find on the site and then for this car specifically we're going to be reusing our rear shock mounts but again something that's available for the cars. So before we get started let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this DIY. For this job we're going to use two different hammers. We have a mallet and a regular metal hammer. We have a torque wrench, a half inch drive ratchet, a 3 8 drive ratchet, two different size quarter inches as well as a couple extensions for that. We have an array of flathead screwdrivers and a pick. We have uh, two different T25s, a T30, a 6mm hex, and a 10mm hex, as well as sockets ranging all the way from 10mm to 19mm. So just have a couple different sizes handy. We have a 13 and an 18mm ratcheting wrench, as well as a standard 18mm wrench and a 16mm wrench. We have a small pry bar. We have a pass-through socket set. This is going to be helpful when we're assembling and disassembling our suspension, as well as some nice-to-haves, a electric impact, as well as an electric ratchet. Not pictured here, we have a screw jack. If you're doing this at home, you're going to want to use a floor jack. If you're not working on a lift, they'll do the same thing. Now that we have our tools covered, let's get started on this DIY. To get started, we're going to work on removing our brake caliper and our ABS and brake pad wear sensor holder here. So what we're going to do is lift up this metal clip, I'm just using a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna pull both of these sensors out. They're just press fit in there with this weather strip sheathing. So that's all that holds them in. Set those to the side. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and remove the bolt that holds our plug in place. Just gonna push back on the line and get it out of the notch that's on the strut neck here and set it off to the side and tuck it behind this line. I'm gonna take my 10 millimeter bolt and just put it back into the carrier here so I don't lose it. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove this 10 millimeter bolt right here. That's gonna be uh, what holds our brake line in place so we have some flexibility to move our caliper around. And then we're gonna take a 10 millimeter hex and we're gonna break free both of these caliper carrier bolts. Now the goal is to hang the caliper somewhere to the side so it's not in your way. That's going to work for us. From here, the next thing you're going to want to do is remove the nut on the other end of this pinch bolt slash sway bar end link. And for that, you're going to need a 18 millimeter socket. I'm just using an 18 on an extension on my 3 8 ratchet. I'm just going to use a rubber mallet to tap the end link back. Once we get some more movement in this, the rest of it will come out. Now from here, we're going to raise the vehicle up a bit more and we're going to work on removing the lower skid plate and loosening up the inner coffin arm bolt so that we have some play in this whole setup. You're going to want to remove this lower skid plate, at least partially. You have 10 T30s that you want to take off. We had this off as we did the other side already. And then you can kind of just let it hang down. There's no real need to go ahead and separate it from the inner piece. With that off, we now have access to our coffin arm bolt that we can loosen up to give this some uh, flexibility. So let's go ahead and do that. To loosen the coffin arm bolt, you're going to need an 18 millimeter for your nut and a 16 millimeter for your bolt head. 
And you don't have to fully remove it. The goal is just to loosen it up so that the arm has some play up and down. This will help when we go to remove the strut. Now, with all that situated, we're gonna go ahead and work up top here for a moment, starting by removing our battery cover. You just twist both of the locks, quarter turn. Now lift right up. Now we're gonna pull off this other cowl piece while also lifting up on this trim here. That comes right off. Now we have access to our three 13 millimeter nuts as well as our PASM cable, which we're gonna be disconnecting. So let's start with the cable. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and free this cable from the little clip that holds it here and just pull that away. This is gonna come down with the uh, strut itself. Now before I undo these 13 millimeter nuts, I'm gonna take a Sharpie and just mark where they're sitting currently, just so that when we put the car back together, it's got in somewhat of an okay alignment. Then you're gonna take a 13 millimeter socket and free these three up. Just be mindful when you remove these, your whole strut and everything below is gonna come down. So clear your feet or make sure if someone's under there that they're out of the way. You can also support it with a jack so that way you can lower it gently. Before I go to uh, rip out the strut, I'm gonna take this brass punch and just punch out the rest of my sway bar end link. This is a New England car, so everything's a little bit crusty. With that, we now have flexibility up and down to work on pulling our strut out. So something you might wanna do as preventative maintenance and or insurance is take some painter's tape and cover your fender liner here. I'm just gonna use an old t-shirt that uh, we're throwing out after this, so I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just grabbing onto the coil and just simply pulling down and towards me. And now before I go ahead and try to pull the rest of it out, I'm gonna grab my t-shirt and just drape it over the old strut mount so I don't scratch my paint. Here we go. And now with this point, our pinch bolts removed, we just have to wiggle this strut out and then we can work on installing our new one. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our new strut mount onto our front strut. So to do that, you're just gonna remove the nut that it comes with. On top of that, you have two washers in here that Bilstein includes. One is gonna be your top washer. That's gonna go on last. You're gonna keep this other one in here. You're gonna keep your blue plastic spacer on your plate like that. Slip that back over your spring. Your new strut mount and bearing goes over that your other washer, and then your new nut. Start those by hand. And then this is where the a pass-through socket set or a cross foot if you have that will come in handy. It's gonna be a 22 millimeter nut. That's gonna be counter held with a six millimeter hex. And the goal is that you tighten the nut without spinning the shaft inside of the coilover. Now we can go ahead and install our new front coilover. Just be mindful of the wire. You don't want to pinch it in anything. There is a channel on the strut dedicated to the cable. You can use it if you'd like. The coilover does have a built-in stop, so it's only gonna go so far. And then the install is gonna be the same as the removal. You're gonna push down on this while also avoiding the ruin your paint. So let's try that with a t-shirt again. And then you can just go ahead and feed it into the strut tower. One thing to note, which I should have pointed out earlier, the uh, strut mount does have two arrows. They simply point front and back. The strut mount only goes in one way. Now we can go ahead and work on passing through this PSAM cable. I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna to wanna to grab your extension as well and take the protective cap off the coilover end and plug it into your extension or extender, whatever you wanna call it. This clips in gently like that. And then in your strut tower, you have an access hole. I'm gonna feed our new cable through that just from, just to avoid pinching it in between the strut tower and the strut mount. So feed that all the way up. And then Bilstein does include some zip ties with this kit. However, they're kind of tiny and you're gonna be bridging a lot of them together. So I'm just gonna go for a standard size. It's a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna make sure that 
My cable isn't interfering with anything else. And I've focused my zip tie around the middle section of the coilover body. Now I'm gonna go ahead and feed the strut mount through the strut tower and just get a nut started up top. I'm just gonna put my sway bar end link slash pinch bolt back through. Perfect. Now with that, we're gonna go ahead and raise the vehicle and work on tightening up all our hardware down here, putting our brakes back on. So let's get started with that. What I'm doing at the moment is I have a screw jack just gently supporting my whole carrier and basically making sure there's no slack between the stop on the coilover and the top of the knuckle. So with that being done, I'm gonna take my nut and thread it back onto the end of the sway bar end link pinch bolt combo. And with that, I'm gonna take my electric ratchet and just snug it up. You're gonna to wanna to torque this nut to 63 foot pounds. Beautiful. Now let's raise the car a little bit more and we'll work on setting everything at ride height and tightening up our coffin arm bolt. Now what I'm gonna do is with my screw jack, I'm gonna raise up the suspension until it's at about a ride height level. This will allow us the ability to tighten down our coffin arm bolt at ride height so that our bushing does not bind up once the car is back on the ground. That's gonna do us. We're gonna go ahead and grab our 16 and 18 and tighten that back down and then torque it to 89 foot pounds. We're gonna get the screw jack out of the way, get ourselves to an eye level workspace, and then we're gonna button up our brakes and any loose ends before we head up top. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our cable and feed it through the notch on our new coilover. Same thing our old strut had, while also keeping our PASM cable tucked in front of it. Just pulls on like that. We're gonna bring it back around and take our 10 millimeter bolt back out, set this back in its home, and then just snug it up. This doesn't take a lot of torque. If anything, you're talking less than 10 foot pounds. That, that's an extreme. I'm just gonna literally snug it up and that's it. While we're at it, we can go ahead and plug in our ABS sensor. And now let's go ahead and bring our brake caliper back over. And we're gonna start with just one of the caliper carrier bolts. And then once they're started by hand, you can go ahead and zap them in or... And same thing, we're gonna to torque these down to 63 foot pounds. And now we're gonna put our 10 millimeter back in place that holds our soft line. You wanna make sure your hole is clear. You don't wanna bind up the screw. This bolt, it will break. Once you get it started by hand, you can just snug it up with the ratchet. Now we can put our brake pad wear sensor back in and then our metal clip can go back over. At this point, everything is buttoned up underneath the wheel well. Let's head back on top of the car and tighten down our three 13 millimeter nuts up top. We already have our one nut that we started earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and get our other two started. New locking nuts come with the new strut mounts if you are replacing them. I'm gonna take my 13 millimeter and I'm gonna align the strut based on my marks as best as possible and just snug these up a little bit at a time. From there, we're gonna go ahead and torque them down to 23 foot pounds. Now, all we have left to do up here is plug in our cable. You can route this however you want. There's a little bit extra versus what came out of the car. I'm gonna feed it underneath this wire like it was before. And then go ahead and plug it into my receiving end over here. With that all buttoned up, we can put our covers back on. Starting with the outer one. And this one can sit back up top, just like that. Take our battery cover. And now with that buttoned up, let's head underneath the car and wrap up our skid plate, put our front wheel back on, and then head over to the rear. You wanna make sure your ends up here end up underneath the front half plate, just like that. And I like to start with one in the middle so it kind of holds it in place and then go from there. You also have two 10 millimeter plastic bolts that go on either end here. They kind of marry these two skid plates together. And 
And with this all buttoned up, we can now put our front wheel back on and then make our way over to the rear of the vehicle. All right, my good people. Now, the best part that you've all been waiting for, and trust me, I try to look for this on YouTube myself, the parcel shelf. This car is equipped with the Bose sound system. So in order to get that off, we're gonna start by removing these two speaker grills, if you'd like to call them that. They're just clipped in, they pop off, just like that. You're gonna have two T30s underneath. You can see I already started mine before since we did do the driver's side off camera but you would use a T30 to get these fully out. Next thing to remove are gonna be these catches where your seats fold into. It's just a six millimeter hex to get these out. Again, keep in mind, I already took these apart. Same thing on the other side. With those both out, we can go ahead and pull this shelf towards us and slide it forward. You're gonna have one electrical connector for the subs right here. It's got two clips on either end you want to push in and then it'll just pull out. Now the next thing is going to be to remove this carpet liner right here. So you want to find a place you can grab it at and just lift up. Put it up top here for now. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this foam carpeting part. Careful with the PASM cable. Then these just lift up. It's just some insulation. Now to get this other one off you want to remove this 10 millimeter nut that holds down the bracket that the sub shelf bolts onto. So again, it's one 10 millimeter nut right here. Once you undo that, you have more mobility on this bracket to access the three 15 millimeter nuts, as well as to get off this insulation right here. And then you have your cable itself, which we're gonna undo now. Usually they zip time from the factory to this retainer right here so we can Cut that zip tie off, we'll replace it later. With that cut, we can go ahead and pull this off. And just like we did on the front, you can take your pick, just lift up on that and separate that. Now, while we're in here, we're gonna undo these three 15 millimeter nuts. All right, and with that done, we can now head to the back of the car and get ready to pull out the uh, coilover. The next step here is going to be to remove the two bolts on these upper control arms. That way it allows us to pivot the whole carrier so that when it comes time to remove the lower shock mount bolt, we have some room to pull it out. Otherwise, it's going to bottom out on your lower control arm. So same thing as the front, you have an 18 on one end and a 16 millimeter head for the bolt. So I'm going to take my two wrenches and just break those free. Now with that, we're gonna raise the car just a hair so we can work on removing the lower shock mount bolt and our sway bar end link. Now the next thing you do is gonna be remove the lower sway bar end link. You're gonna need a T30 to counter hold and a 16 millimeter wrench. One thing I wanna mention is, even though we're doing the rear passenger side right now, I recommend you do the undo the end links on both sides at the same time. That way it allows you to clock the sway bar out of the way, which you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. So by undoing both ends, it allows you to rotate it up. From there, you can go ahead and loosen the two 13 millimeter nuts on the clamp. I already did that on the driver's side, so I'm gonna remove them, and that's gonna allow me to clock this sway bar out of the way so that we can clear this strut. And with that done, I should have more than enough room to get my strut out of here. Now all that's left is this bottom bolt and nut. And you probably guessed it, a 16 on one end and an 18 on the other. However, you're not gonna have room for a closed wrench like this one. So I recommend you get yourself an open wrench for your 18. And with that undone, we can try to get this bolt out as much as possible, basically until it bottoms out with the lower control arm. As you can see, our one arm already popped out. I'm just gonna go ahead and course the other one to come out as well. And now that'll give us the room that we need to maneuver this whole assembly while also pulling out our lower shock bolt. Mm -hmm. 
With that out, now we can work on getting our shock out. You use a small pry bar to just pry the body away from the carrier. Now let's go ahead and get ready to install our new coilover. Now at this point, what I'm gonna do is we're reusing our existing mount. This may or may not apply to you, so feel free to follow along. You're gonna need a 19 millimeter pass-through socket to get the old nut off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pry bar and use it to kind of hold the whole assembly while I break this nut free. So you can see for the rear coil, you don't really need a spring compressor. There's really not any preload on the spring, so you can get away with just taking this off. We're gonna get rid of this rubber insulator. We don't need this. Now we're gonna take our metal portion of our mount that we saved and this new ring that came with the Bilstein kit. And we're basically just gonna wrap it around the body of the mount. And then we'll feed our new nut through the PASM cable. Now the strut mount does have a notch in it that's gonna notch into the shaft on the coilover. So once you find that, you're gonna to wanna to push down on it to seat it all the way through. And then similar to how we took the mount off the old strut, we're just gonna do the reverse here. Now we can go ahead and feed this back into the vehicle. All right, at this point, we can go ahead and install our new coilover. So just like the removal, you're gonna go ahead and feed it up. One thing to note, that metal plate went back on and this outer notch is gonna to face towards you it kind of keys itself into the body line here of the strut tower. And then at the same time, move everything down here so that the shock can make its way over the carrier. Now with that, we can go ahead and feed our bottom shock mount bolt back in. And you want to make sure you give yourself some room to feed the shock nut in. Once we have the nut in, we're just going to leave everything loose so we have some room for adjustability when we control when we hook up our upper control arms again. Now let's go ahead and raise up the car a little bit, get a screw jack under here, and do exactly that. All right. So at this point, I'm using a screw jack to help raise and lower this whole assembly. If you're working on the garage floor or in the driveway, you can mimic the same thing with just a regular floor jack. So I'm going to start raising it. And get that nut started as well. Now that we have everything at ride height, we're gonna torque these two top bolts to 81 and a half foot pounds. While we have everything at ride height, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our lower shock bolt. And then the torque spec for this is gonna be 81 foot pounds. It'd be best to get a cross foot in here. That way you can torque it down properly. All right, my good people. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our sway bar. As I mentioned before, they were undone on both ends with the bracket removed from the driver's side. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed my sway bar back into its home put our bracket back on and button this up down here. Now, if you're gonna to torque these down, the sway bar bushing caps are torqued down to 17 foot pounds. We're gonna be upgrading the sway bar, so for now, I'm just gonna snug them up. Now we're gonna feed our sway bar end link back through the carrier here. Get our 16 millimeter nut started. And again, it's a 16 millimeter, and you're gonna counter hold with a T30. You wanna make sure these are torqued down to 48 foot pounds. Now we can go ahead and install our 15 millimeter bolts and torque these down to 34 foot pounds. Again, these are 15 millimeter bolts. Now we can work on plugging in our cable off the protective sleeve. Then with that being done, we can go ahead and reinstall this piece of insulation. It's got three little cutouts for the bolt holes. Makes it easy to remember where they went. Then we put our bracket back over this and feed our 10 millimeter nut on. 
and then just snug that down gently with the ratchet. With that snug in place, we can put our next piece of insulation back in and then this piece of carpeting. Now we can go ahead and put this main piece of carpeting back. Make sure your subwoofer wire, if you have it, is over. And then I like to start with one side and kind of tuck it in. We can go ahead and slip our subwoofer back over and plug it in, kind of place it back on the shelf. And it's just gonna slide in beautifully like that. Then from there, you're gonna take your two T30 screws. I like to start them by hand first. And you just snug that up, put your cover back on, and do the same thing on the other side. Beautiful. Now we just have to put our seat catches back in. And there you have it, my good people. Another DIY in the books. Overall, a straightforward job. Definitely one for the weekend. A uh, couple of basic tools is all it's gonna take. Again, a good upgrade for these cars and or a good refreshment, depending on what you're installing. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.